do you like teenage girls? When you say teenage, how are we talking? Girls who are teenagers. Hey, roll us on your wrist for playing giant. Unless I want to come home with me, all you have to do is be Quit playing. I didn't do this stuff. But just use your common sense. This is not me, y'all. I'm fighting for my life. Y'all killing me with this This is not about music. What up and welcome back. It's your girl Jane, the plainest Jane, and we got some syrup to get into. We got two different videos that we're doing this evening. So we got two lives. We're doing this one, which is day five, which is Friday, was Friday. And then we have day six, which is what happened today in court for R. Kelly. I know, I know, I know y'all don't like really long videos, even though I can't always be breaking everything up, okay? Come on in, hit thumbs up, find a seat on the bus. We're going to pull off in literally just a second. I know some of y'all don't like long videos. That's the reason why I'm breaking up these two days instead of doing days five and six together. Um, however, understand that sometimes with the long videos, whether it's R. Kelly or not, it's impossible for people to do different videos for every different subject that they're doing. It's just going to break up the row um, and the flow of how things go. But look, y'all know things are always sticky in Hollywood and in real life. I know y'all been looking for me. Some of y'all done, done put out missing persons reports and all that other stuff, right? I told y'all on Thursday when I was giving y'all day four that I had tickets to go see Kevin Hart on Friday, which was day five. So I wasn't going to get a chance to check in with you all. I enjoyed the show. Is Kevin the funniest person in uh, in person? No, but the experience going out there and all that really dope. Okay, so come on in. Look, I'm I'm not trying to spend a whole bunch of time. Right, we've got way too much, way too much that we need to discuss. You read the title. Things get nasty when we're talking about this R. Kelly trial. Shout out to the channel members because y'all got some early stuff with regards to these transcripts. With regards to Andrea Kelly, I put something backstage for my channel members to see a little bit earlier today. We were all in the bush weeping and throwing up together, okay? So come on and have a seat on the bus. You all know that the star government witness, aka the girl in the tape, Rashonda Lanfair, is Sparkle's niece. She's testifying in this trial and boy does it make R. Kelly look bad? Just 11 months after R. Kelly's conviction and just seven weeks after his sentencing, he's back in court to face the Chicago trial, which is kind of like a redo for 2002, but it's not double jeopardy because not only was he obstructing justice, but he's done these same type of acts with the same and different people numerous times. So there's plenty to charge him for, not to mention he beat the case, right? The 2002 indictment slash 2008 trial because he was obstructing justice paying people to lie to the government and all this other stuff, right? So R. Kelly has several different crimes that he's committed as it relates to the same victim, multiple tapes, multiple victims, not to mention, right? 13 counts of the production of child pornography, right? We're going to keep it clean in the first couple minutes. Um, again, he's being charged with rigging the 2008 trial that stemmed from the 2002 indictment. And the government is also seeking a money forfeiture of $1.5 million, not only from R. Kelly, but also from his co-defendants because R. Kelly is not on trial alone as he sits in front of the judge. This is a situation. Let's get into it. I got my co-host here. Come on. Come on. Get your, get your, get your treat. Okay. Are we good? We good? Here, one more. All right. We paid the co-host. All right, you can get down, buddy. That's it. You got two in the beginning of the show. Come on, get down. Get. All right, let's get right into it. The jury literally watched three graphic videos today. We're talking about these videos 
We're talking about these tapes where R. Kelly is having intimate relations with a minor, okay? This is day five, mind you, right? Today is technically day six. This is day five. We're doing day six in the next video right after this. And y'all know how I do this bus ride. It's going to be really easy for y'all to get to the day six video. If you're here live on the bus, if you're chasing the bus, it's going to be something different. But if you're live on the bus, it's going to let you off right at the next bus stop. And we're just going to get straight into day six as soon as we finish this, okay? But the jury was able in day five, which was Friday, to watch three videos with the illegal illicit relations that R. Kelly was having with a then 14 year old. We're going to go over the audio, what's being done, what's being said in these illicit videos. It also came out as I was doing my research and as I'm reading the transcripts of day five, which was Friday, that Andrea Kelly, R. Kelly's ex-wife, right, had a threesome with Rashonda, a.k.a. the girl in the tape, and her then-husband, R. Kelly, as well. We need to talk. We need to talk about that. Also, Rashonda Lanfair did face cross-contamination, okay? And we're going to get into how both the defense and the prosecution dropped the ball on day five, which was Friday, okay? So hit thumbs up, okay? Have a seat on the bus. If you haven't already, it's free, right? Mind you. I've got my cash app, right? Matter of fact, I don't have my cash. I'm going to put my cash app on the screen. Feel free to send a super chat or a super thanks. Let's get ready for takeoff and let's get into it, shall we? The plane is Jane. This is one of my favorite comments here. She says, I love me some black. And she said, loves me some <laughs> black news. She says, is it just me or does anyone else get tired of seeing people that don't look like them delivering info about them day in and day out? All right, and we're back. Okay, why why is the cash app not on the screen? What's going on? What's going on? Hold on. Not you, Leo. Don't get up here. Okay, let's make sure the cash app is on the screen. Hold up. I'm 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 gonna fix that in a second. But look, let's get into a trigger warning real quick, right? Because we're definitely gonna get into some gruesome details. They they watch the tape. We're going over some of these details as it pertains to what was heard because although the media wasn't able to see the child pornography they were able to hear what transpired as it pertains to that and i'm going to get into some of that stuff um this video does contain descriptions of sexual abuse and sexual trauma so real quick i hope you're feeling all right i hope your mental health is in check okay shout out to my new subscribers i just want to say thank y'all so so much I appreciate each and every one of y'all for coming through. And it's late. It's late, but I appreciate y'all being here. And of course, before I get into breaking down today's topics and viral events, make sure you subscribe and thumbs up or down. Either way, I appreciate it. But remember to think critically and independently, regardless of what you hear from me or anybody else. Okay? Now, let's go ahead and get into what we're talking about today on the bus, right? And I hope y'all really did have a good Monday. Welcome to a whole new week, right? Let's get into discussing this R. Kelly trial. All right, making sure all my settings are correct so that we don't we don't get out of here. All right, we're good to go. Hold on. Okay, here we go. There we go. Okay, now the cash app is up on the screen because Lord knows. YouTube don't be paying me for videos like this. The videos might get a lot of views, which makes y'all think that I'm balling, shot calling, but I'm not. <laughs> so if you want to send two, three, four dollars to the cash app, I do appreciate that. But if this ain't your pay week, that's cool. Just hit the thumbs up. Let's get right into it. Now, you are aware that some of the counts against R. Kelly involve videotaped evidence, which could be difficult to refute. Other counts will largely rely instead on witness testimony. Okay. Shout out to Richie Rich for sending a $5 super chat. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. It says, good morning, gorgeous. I appreciate what you do. Thank you. That means so much. Um, shout out to Ben Zone for um, joining the membership. I know I saw that you joined. Okay, there you are. Thank you for joining the membership. So let's get right into what happened and where we left off, right? Because it's, te it's technically Monday. And the last time I talked to y'all about this, it was technically day four, which was Thursday. And it's, it's, it's day six now. Right. So let's get caught up a little bit. 
So Rashana, aka the girl from the tape, aka Sparkle's niece. She moved into, and this is just a small recap before we get into day five, right? She moved into R. Kelly's mansion. She said he changed for the worse. She starts detailing some of the abuse. Um, they end up having a discussion about whether she received an official settlement. Did she have an official settlement arrangement with R. Kelly? And she says, according to her testimony, she didn't, although she received money, although her parents received money. She's like, there was no official payment arrangement agreement, Okay. Um, she was also asked why she finally started coming clean about her relationship with R. Kelly to law enforcement a few years ago. And she said, because she really just was exhausted with living with his lies. So she decided to come forward. Okay. So that's just the tail end of day four as we get into day five and let's go ahead and get into it. Thank you, Shawanda Marie for joining the channel. Don't forget to check the membership tab. And thank you for typing trigger warning in the chat. The day five begins, okay? So the prosecution wants the judge, Judge Harry Lennon Weber, to address their concern that R. Kelly's lead defense attorney, Jennifer Bond Jean, which so many of us know, they claim that she made inappropriate comments regarding evidence discovery in front of the jury on day four, which was Thursday. And this is when R. Kelly's lead attorney objects. And she claims that she hasn't seen what's on some of the discs that allegedly contain R. Kelly's child, child pornography, right? I'm just going to say pornography just for the, for the sake of it, right? Y'all know what it is. And that the prosecution is being disingenuous regarding proving access to trial evidence. And she says, quote, the government has not provided us with the clips they intend to use and we should know what they're trying to use on those tapes, end quote. Now, the judge declines to make any specific ruling on this issue, Friday, day five, at this time, and implies that he'll make decisions regarding the use of the tapes as they arise, okay? Thank you so much, LD, for becoming a channel member as well. Now, the judge continues to say only the jury will be allowed to see R. Kelly's alleged child corn tapes, they will not be shown to the public in the courtroom. The judge also makes it clear at this time that audio from the tape will not be censored, right? Making it known that the media will be able to hear the content of the tapes, but they won't be able to see it. This is exactly what happened in R. Kelly's New York trial, although that was a state situation. This is a federal situation. That is exactly how things transpired in New York, okay? And if you need a reminder of what was on those tapes, good God. Um, I think I posted it backstage. Yeah, it's, it's posted backstage if you um, scroll down a bit, if you are a channel member. Really disgusting stuff. Can't even lie to you, okay? You heard splashing and all types of stuff. So now we get into the government. Um, Rashawn Landfair is still on the stand, from day four going into day five. And as a matter of fact, day four, she only sat on the stand and had an opportunity to be directly examined by the prosecution. No one had an opportunity from the defense to cross-examine her, okay? Again, this is Sparkle's niece. She's on the stand. She's wearing a white blazer with long braids, et cetera, et cetera. She was on the stand for four hours on Thursday, by the way. 267 of us in here, shout Shout out to y'all, 138 thumbs up. We can do better than that. Hit thumbs up. Um, if you are a member of the Hive, aka if you do support R. Kelly, there will be an opportunity for you to call in at the end of the show. Keep it quick. Keep it brief. I'm only interested in talking to people who want to defend R. Kelly, who feel like R. Kelly is being done wrong at the very end of the show. Keep in mind, you will be calling in and you will have to show your face in order to join the panel. Okay, listen and listen good. I know some of the PHOP can't quite comprehend, but that's what it is. You have an opportunity to come defend Joe Kang if you want to at the end of the show. Okay. So Vashonda Lanfair is on the stand, uh, uh, on, on the stand, right? As soon as we get into day five, which is Friday, it's time for cross examination, right? She sat there and the prosecution talked to her all day. Um, on Thursday, okay? And so the first person to cross-examine her, which a lot of people were surprised by, 
was uh, Milton Brown, right? R. Kelly's got two co-defendants on this trial. He's got Milton June Brown and he's got um, McDavid, Darrell McDavid. Both of them used to work for him. One as his manager, one as his personal assistant. Both are his associates. So Milton Brown's assistant was able to cross-examine Rashonda Landfair first, okay? Now, this is the attorney. Her name is Kathleen Leon, and she questions Rashonda Landfair, the girl from the infamous tape where R. Kelly is seen uh, degrading her and being illegal, right? The urine. So the attorney is questioning Rashonda about the time that Milton Brown allegedly took her to get the R. Kelly tattoo cover up. Now, remember, we covered this in day four. She got a tattoo when she had went to Cancun slash the Bahamas, got a tattoo of R. Kelly's name with the heart around it. Apparently, Milton Brown took her to go get that covered up because R. Kelly wasn't with it. She was supposed to be hiding from the media because word of the tape got out, but instead she went and got a tattoo. R. Kelly felt like that was just a bad move for him, linking the two of them together as the two of them try to deny the allegations. So her strategy right out the gate, right, uh, Milton Brown's attorney was to paint Milton Brown as a fellow victim of R. Kelly as well, as someone who couldn't question R. Kelly for fear of losing his job, okay? So this attorney for Milton Brown is spending their time emphasizing to the jury that R. Kelly kept his relationship with Rashonda, the girl from the tape, strictly secret in that Milton was just merely just an errand runner, okay? Milton's attorney says to Rashonda, you really have no idea if R. Kelly told Milton why you were having the tattoo covered up. All you know is that R. Kelly needed to keep his secrets secret. Rashonda confirms that statement, right? They're, they're, they're trying to say to her, do you really know what R. Kelly said to him? Or did he just take you for a ride to do something, right? That's that murky gray area that they're riding in between. The attorney also says to Rashonda, it's the point of keeping R. Kelly secret to ensure he could continue leading his double life. Rashana confirms. She says yes. So that's a, a, a very brief, right? Because the R. Kelly and his two co-defendants, R. Kelly is facing more of the counts and charges and allegations than his co-defendants. Although this is a federal trial and the whole thing is a big deal, R. Kelly's co-defendants don't have nearly as much to stand up to and face as R. Kelly. So that was as brief as Milton Brown. That is as brief as that cross-examination was. All their attorney had to say to Rashonda, right? Now we continue with cross-examination, but now we've got R. Kelly's attorney talking to Rashonda. She comes in hot. She comes in hot. Okay. She comes in and says, you had a sexual relationship with R. Kelly as an adult, correct? She does clarify as an adult, right? Now, mind you, this is R. Kelly's attorney speaking to Rashana Lanfair, who was the 14-year-old girl that we seen depicted in the tapes with R. Kelly from the 2000s, right? R. Kelly's attorney says, you had a sexual relationship with him as, a, as an adult, didn't you, right? Kind of trying to discredit or, 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 or um, count out the, the, the minor stuff. Rashana confirms. R. Kelly's attorney continues by making it clear that Rashana continued to live with R. Kelly and his wife for years after they broke up. Elaborating further that even when Rashana moved out, she stayed close to R. Kelly. Now, here go R. Kelly's attorney in a very disbelieving tone, right? Addressing the fact that she continued to live with R. Kelly even after, and his wife even after they broke up. R. Kelly's attorney says, even though he was abusive, and her tone really said it all. She sounded like she was being halfway sarcastic and halfway like she just didn't believe her. She's just trying to make a point, trying to make it look stupid. 
So Rashana says he wasn't abusive all the time, right? Because part of Rashana's claims are that R. Kelly's abusive, he's manipulative. And those were some of the last things that she said on the stand on Thursday is that he was abusive, spankings, physical abuse, emotional abuse, so on and so forth. So the girl from the tape, Sparkle's niece, Rashana, says that R. Kelly controlled her life even as an adult. R. Kelly's attorney challenges that by pointing out how, Ellie, how R. Kelly paid for her college education. Now, then R. Kelly's attorney starts digging into Sparkle's niece's family's relationship with R. Kelly, specifically her father continuing to work with him. As it pertains to R. Kelly's music, specifically one of our, a few of R. Kelly's albums. That's where R. Kelly's attorney is digging into. Years after the relationship ended between his daughter, right? Rashonda Lanfair, the girl from the tape, and R. Kelly. And even after the 2002 child corn indictment. So, okay, you're upset. You're devastated. Rashonda gave plenty Right. And her mother's going to touch on some of this testimony as well, as far as when they found out R. Kelly was having an, uh, you know, an inappropriate, intimate relationship with Rashana and CPS, Child Protective Services, even approached them about it. Right. Hey, is this your daughter in this tape? They saw it was their daughter in the tape. They denied it. So here our Kelly's attorney is like, well, after you found out and you saw the tape, he went to court, the indictment. Why was your dad still working for R. Kelly? Mind you, her dad has passed away. Her dad has passed away. And here's what the attorney is asking. Right? So her father was still working for R. Kelly, still making some money, collaborating with R. Kelly, assisting him with his music. Even after the father had knowledge of the tape, and again, we went over the father's reaction to the knowledge of the tape, he was devastated, right? So R. Kelly's attorney says, okay, well, your father was working with R. Kelly on his music. He was cordial with him even after y'all broke up and you and R. Kelly still got together and had intimate times and relations. Rashana confirmed and said, correct. So R. Kelly's lead attorney moves forward with questioning Rashonda about the sex tape. Says, in 2002, you learned that someone leaked the tape to a reporter, right? Rashonda says, yes. R. Kelly's attorney says, and that person is Sparkle, right? Rashonda says, can you repeat the question? R. Kelly's attorney says, the person that provided the tape was Sparkle, Right? Rashonda says, that's my understanding. Yes. Now, mind you, the sparkle that Rashonda is saying leaked the tape is her aunt. Okay. This is literally her aunt. This is her mom's sister. Okay. So now we've got our Kelly's attorney finger pointing at McDavid with the following question to Rashonda. Saying Robert also struggled with math and reading and writing. He delegated those things to people like Mr. McDavid. Rashana confirms that, right? So this is what our Kelly's attorney is doing. She's asking questions to specifically get Rashana to implicate McDavid. My attorney's illiterate. My attorney don't know, uh, you know, I'm sorry, not my attorney. My client is illiterate. My client don't really know about whatever business dealings and payoffs y'all talking about. My client's stupid, right? It's essentially what R. Kelly's attorney is trying to say. Now, R. Kelly's attorney shows various text messages to the court to establish contact between Rashana and R. Kelly in the late 2018 slash early 2019, which was the lead up to the surviving R. Kelly premiere, Okay. So, R. Kelly was actually close to Rashana's mother. And I want to put something on the screen so that you all can see it. Take a look at it while you listen to me, okay? You might even need a screenshot and zoom in a little bit. So, I'm going to make it a little bigger on the screen. Continue to listen. If you need to zoom in, do so. I'll, try, I'll, I'll, I'll zoom into the top. 
I'll let it sit here. I'll keep reading and then we'll scroll to the bottom. But read this, uh, read this transcript as I speak, right? Again, we got R. Kelly's attorney showing various text messages to the court to establish contact between Rashonda and R. Kelly in late 2018 slash early 2019, which is the lead up to the surviving R. Kelly premiere. Now, R. Kelly was close to Rashonda's mother, and this was established in court and confirmed by Rashonda as well. And when Rashonda's grandmother, who was her mother's mom, passed away, Rashonda initiated contact with R. Kelly because she wanted him to reach out to her mother and say a few comforting words. Rashonda even invited him to her 34th birthday, 34th birthday party in 2018. Okay. So let's get into it. Apple Juice said, my client is stupid. Got me. With it's the truth. That's what she's trying to go by. She literally said, my client is stupid. <laughs> he can't read. He can't write. He don't know what was going on. Bullshit, girl. <laughs> it's not true. Okay. Okay. So now we get into this transcript here, right? So let, let's zoom in to see exactly what's, what's going on. What's being said in the courtroom with regards to the relationship between R. Kelly and not only Rashana, but Rashana's mother, okay? Apparently they had a relationship that might not have been super close, but they were definitely close enough to the point where he wanted to send her condolences, right? So um, you can see here it says, because Mr. Kelly was close to your mother, right? That's correct. And R. Kelly responded a little bit later and said, oh, I just got this. I'm sorry to hear that. Send me her number, meaning send me your mom's number, please. Okay. So you can see that this was initiated. It says, my mom lost her mother. Check on you when you get a moment, please. That's what Rashana is asking. Hey, can you contact my mother? Because my grandmother died and my mom's having a hard time. Can you contact my mom, R. Kelly? It's, it's what's being asked. R. Kelly finally responded. It says, um, I just got this. I'm sorry to hear that. Send me the number. Um, and then R. Kelly agrees that he's going to talk to her mom. Okay. So this is what the attorney is talking about. Right. How do y'all feel about that? I know. I should look. When I tell you I have to pick my jaw up off the floor several times when I'm doing this research. I mean it, okay? So R. Kelly and Rashonda's mom, they were actually a little close, right? It's confirmed in the court. But also, in addition to that text message, there were other text messages that were brought up in court. Um, you had Rashonda inviting R. Kelly to her 31st, 34th birthday party in 2018, friendly text messages about happy new year. And, you know, honestly, depending on where you land with this series of different text messages, hey, happy new year. Matter of fact, she sent messages to comfort him around the time of the Surviving R. Kelly debut. And she says, hey, I love you. Don't let the devil win. Okay. So there was a series of friendly text messages that were sent around 2018 and 2019. And these are the type of things that R. Kelly's attorney was trying to highlight and establish in the courtroom, which is why is she so comfortable? Why does she continue to reach out to him if he's so terrible, if he's so abusive, right? And so depending on where you land with this, you'll categorize this exchange because this was far after the alleged abuse and when he stood trial in 2008, based off the 2002 indictment, um, depending on where you land with this exchange, this will either speak to the extended hold that R. Kelly and other abuse victims have over Rashonda Landfair, you know what I mean? Um, or, or other perpetrators of abuse, rather. This will either speak to the extended hold that R. Kelly has over her as a result of the abuse and grooming, or it'll serve as a form of proof to you that the abuse never existed. One of the two. Okay. So I want to know where you land with this. Do you feel like these text messages, right? Because I, I get how it looks, right? I, I, I totally get how it looks. 
However, I'm not ignorant to how victims of any type of abuse, but especially sexual abuse, uh, how they have this disconnection to the, the perpetrator, right? So do you feel like this speaks to the extended hold that R. Kelly has over her as a result of the abuse and grooming? Put a two in the chat if so. Or do you feel like it serves as a form of proof to you that the abuse never existed? Put a four in the chat if so. Put a two in the chat if you think that, yeah, she's still not right in the head. She was still abused. He abused her. Put a two in the chat. Put a four if you feel like, no, this is proof that abuse don't even live here. Okay? Abuse don't even live here. And see, I got to write these things down because sometimes I'll be watching the replay and people just put the numbers in the chat and I have no clue what the numbers even stand for. Okay? So let me go ahead and write this down just so that I can connect with you better for those of you all who are chasing the bus. And you're putting hard comments um, on the video, okay? Hey, shout out to Eris crew. I haven't seen you in so long. All right, let's keep pushing. So text messages that were revealed in court showing how Rashonda was trying to comfort R. Kelly during the rollout of the surviving situation. They put those up on the screen as well. The jury had access to see that stuff too. Surprisingly, I see no fours in the chat. Where did P have at? The P-Hive not here? Ain't that something? Child, I give the P-Hive an opportunity to call in and they go ghost. All right? Here's the thing. This is why I say both the, the prosecution and the defense, they both dropped the ball in this case because here's what happened. And I feel like they did this on purpose. I don't feel like this was a mistake. I feel like this was very intentional on behalf of of Jennifer Bon Jean. And shout out to Shawanda Williams for joining the membership. I appreciate you so much. Don't forget to check the membership only tab. Now, our Kelly's defense team put these text messages on the screen, but apparently had forgotten to black out one portion that contained Rashonda Lanfair's first and last name. Mind you, she's going by a pseudonym in court. The pseudonym she's going by is Jane. It ain't me, child. I, I, I know a lot about what's going on in court, but trust me, it's not me in court, okay? I'm the plaintiff's Jane, but I ain't this Jane. Um, plus my date of birth and my age don't line up to this. But nonetheless, the irony of R. Kelly's folks putting these texts on the screen and her first and last name just so happens to be up there. Mind you, the jury isn't supposed to be trying to look anything up, see anything. You know, not to say everybody should know her first and last name, but if they didn't already, I feel like R. Kelly's team put that up there already. I feel like they did that on purpose just so that the jury can go home and look for some information, even though every day when they leave court, they're instructed, don't go on social media, don't talk to anyone. Don't, um, you know, don't research anything. Don't read the newspaper. Don't watch TV. The judge says this at the end of every single court proceeding. So if they wanted to keep some anonymity, I know I'm pronouncing an anonymous. If they wanted to keep the anonymity, <laughs> it's gone. It's gone. And our Kelly's attorneys did this on purpose, in my opinion. Okay. That's my opinion. I joined late. Did they ever question her testimony that she didn't become active till she was 15 and the evidence showed that she was 14 in the video? So, Cindy, let me answer that question for you because I do have the answer to that question. The answer to that question, because there's just there, there, there's been a huge tizzy about, oh, well, you know, she said she was 15 when she lost her virginity, but she was 14 in the video. Or she said she had sexual contact with him at 14, but she lost her virginity at 15. She lied. She's contradicting herself. Sexual contract and uh, sexual contact and penetration are two different things. Jerking somebody off, oral sex is different from actual penetration, right? 99.99999% of the world don't consider sucking an eggplant losing your virginity. It's penetration in, in, in your vaginal area. 
and I hate to be so graphic, but like that is the that, that's the main difference. She started having sexual contact. R. Kelly started touching her breasts. She started appearing in different videos with R. Kelly where he was doing sexual things and telling her to do sexual things to him. But it wasn't penetration until 15, which is why she was 14 when she appeared in the explicit video. But why she was 15 when she actually lost her virginity. So I hope that that answers your question. And that was actually something we discussed in day four, which was the last video. So let's continue, okay? And you know, 14 or 15, you know, when, when, when it comes to the P-Hob and R. Kelly fan, oh, she lied. She said she was 14. And she, what, what is the difference between a 14-year-old or 15-year-old being, you know, even if she had got it confused or mixed up, which she didn't, there's a different, there, there is a whole difference in definition between sexual contact, Right? And losing your virginity. Those are two different things in case you don't know. But if you didn't know, you're going to learn today. But if it wasn't and she had messed up and said 14 instead of 15 or vice versa. Why would we be discrediting? It's still gross what Robert did. Right? That's the bottom line. That's the bottom line. Okay. All right. So. Let's continue. After her first and last name had been up on the screen with these text messages for a while, a loud whisper had went up at the defense table and the exhibit was quickly taken down. But nonetheless, they're still showing these text messages. And you can see that Rashana, as I was telling you earlier, she's saying to R. Kelly, I love you. Don't let the devil win when the, the surviving R. Kelly docuseries is coming out. Robert responds, right? And he says, yeah, I was on a major breakdown, but now I'm on a major buildup. And so R. Kelly's attorney then says, so Robert wasn't trying to influence you to do anything. You were just commensurating, right? So Rashana confirms, right? Because, I mean, he obviously wasn't trying to influence her to do anything as she reaches out to him in an attempt to comfort him based off of the massive amount of scrutiny that she knows he's receiving based off of the preview, um, the premiere and the debut rather of Surviving R. Kelly, right? Now we have R. Kelly's attorney then finds a way to establish that Rashana R. Kelly and R. Um, and R. Kelly's then wife, Andrea Kelly, they all three had sex together. And this is the part where, excuse me, I'm about to go off just a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay. I got another transcript here on the screen for you all to look at. Now, R. Kelly, Robert, and Andrea Kelly were married for 13 years. They divorced in 2009. Let's go ahead and read some of this transcript so you know exactly what I'm talking about. And shout out to the channel members because it was literally sometime this morning when I posted this up here and let y'all know how I felt about Andrea. Although I had discussed it in the previous video, y'all get early access to channel members to, this, to the transcripts and other little nuggets, okay? So when we get into this transcript, right? This is Bon Jean questioning Rashonda Lanfair. She says, okay. She's handed her pictures and says, does that fairly and accurately depict Robert's wife at various, I guess, ages? Rashonda says, yes. R. Kelly's attorney says, you know her for, you knew her for many, many years. You lived under her roof, right? Rashonda says, yes. R. Kelly's attorney says, okay, I would ask that it be admitted and that it be published to the jury. So, then R. Kelly's attorney says, oh, yes, I'm sorry. This was his ex-wife too, right? Rashonda says, yes. R. Kelly's attorney says, he's not married to her anymore. Rashonda says, yes. R. Kelly's attorney says, in fact, he got divorced while he was with you, right? Rashonda says, yes. R. Kelly's attorney says, he got divorced to be with you, correct? Rashana says, 
Sparkle's niece says, that wasn't my understanding. It was because their marriage didn't work out. Then our Kelly's attorney says, all right. And you testified that when you lived under her roof as an adult, that there was sexual interaction between you, her, and R. Kelly, right? Rashana confirms and says, correct. Remember when I told y'all that there was something about Andrea's spirit that I just didn't like? And I, listen, I'm not no church, spiritual, holy matrimony dude. Look, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. But there was something about Andrea and them goddamn Botox ass cheeks. Okay? It's a difference between cheekbones that just sit naturally high. Exhibit A, exhibit B. And Andrea Kelly and her flip-flopping. She refused to let go of R. Kelly's last name. She refuses. She's holding on to it as if she needs it to survive. She's a grown-ass woman. And she had sex with Rashonda Landfair and R. Kelly. While it's not documented here that Rashonda was a minor at that time, you mean to tell me that this took place after the 2002 indictment and the 2008 trial that R. Kelly's wife, who was a grown-ass woman, had no clue that the woman she was hopping in bed with with her nasty, pissy-ass husband, that she didn't know that that was the girl from the tape you're not telling me Andrea Kelly was oblivious to all that R. Kelly was doing. I had somebody trying to argue with me down below in the comments. And baby, trust me, it's way too many of y'all for me to be trying to be arguing with y'all. And I'm not arguing with you. When you support and you like R. Kelly. I will refute your, your, <laughs> your illogical points with fact and evidence, but. Oh, Andrea didn't know about none of them girls, not even Rashonda, because it was a mansion and the house was so big. Why would you assume she know a woman's instinct, a maternal instinct? Stop playing. Black women, a lot of us naturally have this training to the point where it seemed like a lot of us work for the goddamn FBI. Whether it's our intuition, whether it's our fact-finding skills, you're not telling me that he was abusing all of these minors in your home and you didn't know none of it. And then you ended up in bed with one of them. You're not telling me you didn't know about the name or the face of Rashonda Landfair because everybody does. You're not telling me you were that oblivious to his wrongdoing. Let's get into an exhibit here. Let's get into an exhibit and shout out to all 523 of us in the chat. At the very least, if we got 523 in the chat, I feel like I at least deserve 230 likes, almost like half likes. We at, we at 221. Can, can we get the likes up? Can we get the likes up while I rant real quick about how nasty Andrea Kelly is? And that's why them dance moves them fell off too. Let's get into the clip about how, when, and where she refused to let go of that last name. Let's get into it. Those of you who did decide to keep your last name, what is the main reason why? Usually yeah. for children. Everything. My for kids. The, children. the kids, yeah. It's the kids. Well, yeah, it's right? for the kids and for me, because I paid for my name in blood, sweat, and tears, literally. Literally. At the end of the day, people need to realize our last names are not car leases. It's not like at the end of the marriage, give it back. Every woman sitting up here has earned that name because nobody's sitting up here, baby mama, everybody was a wife. That's true. Andrea, for you, I, I can only imagine the pressure, especially in the last few years, with the negative connotation around the name. How have you been handling that? It's very difficult, but I also had to realize that people crucify me for the very thing they're curious about. At the end of the day, if my last name wasn't Kelly, you wouldn't be on Instagram and you wouldn't be looking me up and TMZ wouldn't be calling me if I was Mrs. Jones on the corner. Girl, it's you, it's 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 you bragging about it. 
Y'all hating, but y'all want it. Because y'all wouldn't be calling me. Y'all wouldn't be interested in me if it wasn't for it. So y'all hating, girl, everybody that want to see what you got going on, don't think that what you got going on is conducive. Bitch, I'm nosy as hell. And best believe I was over on your page today seeing what you got to say. That don't mean I'm supportive or that I, I, I care about what you really got going on. I care about your response to this crut. This is crut. The nerve of you to act like you 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 really got white privilege, like you the Kardashian. Well, all publicity is good publicity. Everybody's calling me, girl, because your husband pisses on children. I think you need to reconsider. What is wrong with you that you think you got to fight to hold on to a name like this? That you think you're not talented enough to surpass the mess, the nastiness, your children have even changed their names because they don't want to have nothing to do with this. One of your children even changed their gender, and that's a whole nother story. The fact of the matter is you really don't think that you can do better. You really don't think you have enough drawing power to be as popular. And baby, you can change your last name tomorrow if you want to. Everybody's going to remember you and them cheekbones and them dance moves and your complicity. Everybody's going to remember it. You don't have to keep his last name because you feel like it's going to give you some notoriety or visibility. Because I guarantee you, you're getting more shame than anything. But for some reason, you think that you got this Kardashian type of, well, they hate me, but I'm going to make money. No, baby, because what the one thing the Kardashians ain't got that you got is a pedophile. And so maybe the all publicity is good publicity, it might work for them. But not when it comes to a pedophile. Girl, the nerve of you, he's a pedophile. And you talk about, but my phone keep ringing and people are interested in who I am. Let's go to the bush. Let's go. Let me just go in the bush and weep. Let me just go in the bush and weep. I just have to go in the bush and weep, really. I, I don't understand. I swear to God, I don't understand. She talking about I paid for it in blood, sweat, and tears, baby. That's just and and then after this, because this this one here, you were trying to be cute, but you did ones after that where you were saying he hog tied me and I couldn't leave. Okay, well, any woman that's been abused, whether it be physically, emotionally, psychologically, or whatever the case is, they paid for that time spent in abuse and blood, sweat, and tears. It don't mean that they want to hold on to it. So in one breath, you want to sit up here with Nicole Murphy, Eddie Murphy's ex-wife, and all these other people who have divorced these big names in Hollywood and act like, I work for mine. Then when you realize people like, girl, you slept with some of these girls and I don't even think that all of them was over 18 all of a sudden. It's, oh, he hugged top me, girl. I dealt with some blood, sweat, tears in a relationship too. Do you think I was trying to hold on to what it looked like, what it sound like, the perception for other people? But girl, let me move on because I could sit here on Andrea and them tight ass cheeks all day. Corner going through the same thing, no one would care. So at the end of the day, if Kelly makes 2020 call my phone, if Kelly makes me get on the view and I can talk about domestic violence awareness, I will continue to use this name because well, that's on your wrist of plain giant. as if you need to keep his last name to speak on what he's done to you. Girl, you don't look like everybody out here in a mama. Everybody know who you are. I rest my case on the fact that Andrea Kelly had sex with Rashana Landfair and wants to pretend like she didn't know that that was the girl who was 14 in the tape, the tape, the girl at the heart of the trial that her man, right, Andrea Kelly's husband had to fight this case for six years. And this being R. Kelly's wife is acting like, I got in bed with her, but I didn't know that was a girl that was involved in the case and my man had to fight for six years. Girl, tell it to somebody who believes it because it's not me. You nasty. You was in on it. You was in on it.
You had threesomes with quite a few of them. This is just the one that I pulled out that I felt like was the most noteworthy. I saw you had sex with a couple other ones too, but that's a whole nother conversation. Let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. So now, right, we still have some cross-examination transpiring with Rashonda Lanfair and R. Kelly's attorney, Jennifer Bonjean. Now, now Bonjean tries to slide in some false facts, false facts into the courtroom by saying that R. Kelly, again, divorced um, Andre to be with Rashonda. Rashonda corrected her on that, right? So now... R. Kelly's attorney, Jennifer Bonjean, is moving on to 2019 when the Cooks County State's Attorney's Office contacted Rashana and they were in possession of the tapes allegedly involving her and R. Kelly. At this time, Rashana texted R. Kelly and said, you need to call me right away or I'm making decisions on my own. Now, R. Kelly's attorney tries to establish this as an extortion attempt, right? Now, mind you, she's been quiet all this time. Um, this is 2019. She lied, you know, when it came to the 2002, 2008 allegations, but now in 2019, she's texting R. Kelly with this tone that you need to call me right away or I'm making decisions for myself. Right. Bonjean says this is extortion. Rashawn is strongly denies that she's like, no, the decision that I was going to make was to cooperate with the authorities because I no longer wanted to carry his lies right? That's her reason, okay? Not that it was extortion, right? Now, R. Kelly's attorney has been snooping on Rashana's social media posts and noticed that Rashana is launching a venture sponsored by Gregos Vodka. And R. Kelly's attorney suggests that Sparkle's niece will be paid for the story after the trial, this trial that's going on right now. So R. Kelly's attorney says you decided to cooperate, not because you needed to get something off your chest, but because there were benefits. She says, when there's an investigation going on, the first person you called was Robert. Rashonda says, that's what I was used to. Yes. Now, mind you, Rashonda's 37 years old now, right? But she was 14 at the time she appeared in the tape. That the jury did get to see today. And we're going to get to the vivid audio description of said tape in just a moment. Hey, thanks for letting me keep you connected and in the know with what's happening in the black world. Don't forget to smash on that like button for support and for more black news. Now, in Rashana's initial interviews with federal prosecutors in 2019, she refused to discuss a relationship with R. Kelly and refused to watch any videos. Now, R. Kelly's attorney is repeatedly asking her whether that was her own decision. And Rashana acknowledges that it was her own decision. So uh, R. Kelly's attorney then asks Rashana you did have a future relationship with R. Kelly and you ended up being with him for another 10 years, right? Rashana confirms and she says, yes. R. Kelly's attorney says, you told an assistant state's attorney that you didn't know if R. Kelly had relationships with young girls. And so R. Kelly's attorney is steadily getting at the fact that Rashana has provided false statements to the U.S. attorney's office which we've already established, right? Which is why she has immunity so that she won't be charged for perjury for her previous lies based off of coming clean now, right? So R. Kelly's attorney says, you made a false statement to the U.S. attorney's office. R. Kelly didn't tell you to lie. You told that lie. So Rashana says, I didn't want to get other people involved. So yes, I did do that. Again, R. Kelly's attorney is looking for this big gotcha moment. That's what they're looking for. That's what they're looking for, is, is, is a big gotcha moment. Rashana also states that other reasons um, why she was, uh, why she lied, right? Like why she lied to them back in the previous trial. And she states that she was ashamed, but she states that she was also trying to protect Robert as well, okay? So, now, Robert's attorney is asking Sparkle's niece if she's going to seek restitution after this trial is done. Rashana lets her know that she hasn't decided if she's going to seek restitution. 
And this, honestly, this particular order of questioning, it insinuates that R. Kelly's attorney is hinting at Rashonda changing her mind once she learned that she could qualify for restitution. Okay? So that is what that is about. Okay? If you don't know what restitution is, let me go ahead and put it on the screen for you here as I continue. Okay? So again, R. Kelly's attorney is asking her, are you going to seek restitution? She hasn't decided yet. And essentially, R. Kelly's attorney is like, yeah, you just trying to get some money here, right? Because although this isn't a civil situation, typically you've got like a criminal situation where you're looking to press charges. You want to get somebody punished by the law or a civil situation where you're looking for money. But there are some criminal cases and instances where you are able to get restitution, which is a monetary um, something that it's money. It's money that you get based off of the wrongdoing of someone in a criminal proceeding. Okay. So that's what restitution is. And I'll leave the definition up here for you for a while. So now our Kelly's attorney is prompting Rashana, AKA Sparkles niece, the girl from the tape to elaborate on her immunity deal. And so Sparkles Me shares that she's asked for immunity for herself and her parents for not being truthful in 2008 and to make sure that they were protected for being truthful moving forward. This means that they will not be charged for perjury, although they lied previously. And they're obviously contradicting themselves. Back in 2008, it was, that's not me. That's not my daughter. I don't know who that is, but they did positively ID R. Kelly in that tape. Okay, so now R. Kelly's attorney circles back to asking Sparkle's niece and reminding the jury that Sparkle is the one who, according to Rashana's testimony, who prompted Rashana to sit on R. Kelly's lap to rub his head and proposition him to be her godfather. Okay, so that's that. And again, you know, what's her face? Sparkle is, she, she's got a lot of stuff to say online. I would play the video here, but y'all, she had this airplane or something going through in the background and it's just too loud. But I'm pretty sure a lot of y'all got hip to that over the weekend. Not to mention before Sparkle even came out with that video, I was snooping in Sparkle's comments and I posted backstage for the channel members. So y'all already knew what type of time she was on. Before she made that video, I told y'all that Sparkle was calling her niece and her sister, who was Rashana's mom, a liar. I posted that backstage before I even went live with day four on Thursday. So if you ain't already hit to the membership and being early to the syrup to the tea, join the membership, okay? This is a transcript that you can see where Bone Jean is asking, this is the sparkle that you said she encouraged you to ask Robert to be your godfather and had you sit on his lap and rub his head. Rashonda says, yes. The attorney, R. Kelly's attorney says, did you speak with Sparkle today? She says no. Okay. Now, R. Kelly's attorney moves to address the allegation that R. Kelly gave Rashonda, a 14-year-old Rashonda, alcohol when she was a minor. Clearly, this is an allegation that stems from a depiction on the tape itself paired with Rashonda's testimony from the day prior, again, which was Thursday, day four excuse me, Thursday, day four of the testimony in one of the explicit, illicit tapes, you could see she's drinking out of this glass and she testified that it was Crystal that R. Kelly gave her before he began violating her, okay? So now R. Kelly's attorney questions if it was really Crystal. And y'all know Crystal was literally only a thing like back in the day. Don't nobody be talking about Crystal nowadays. Um, it's just champagne, but there's still an al alcoholic content to it. Um, so you had no business feeding that to a child. But nonetheless, R. Kelly's attorney is questioning if this is really Crystal, that 14-year-old Rashana allegedly drank in the tapes. And R. Kelly's attorney brings up the possibility that it may have been water or another alcoholic drink. But Rashana asserts and confirms that this was champagne. This was Crystal. It was not water. It was not a prop. This adult coerced me into drinking alcohol, period. 
Okay. Now, Bone Jean, R. Kelly's lead attorney, she circles back again to the benefits of Rashana Sparkle's niece receiving, right? She's receiving what she's receiving for cooperating with the government in this case, prompting Rashonda to specify and testify that the government has helped her get Section 8 housing benefits and pays and, and that they pay travel and meal expenses related to the case. The housing benefits were because Rashonda felt unsafe as a cooperator. So, you know, she's cooperating with the authorities and the authorities, the government is 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 just kind of helping her survive. They're giving her section eight so she can relocate. She's already stated that she was being harassed. There was some witness intimidation that took place. And so they helped her relocate. But R. Kelly's attorney decides to say, you just wanted them to pay your rent. Like this, the, the, this was a perk. You were just trying to get some money from them. And Rashana refutes that. Okay. So that is that. Now we have R. Kelly's attorney deciding to move forward and uh, to, to speak towards the relationship between Rashana and the former lead prosecutor on the R. Kelly trial. Okay. So this is something that I, I feel like you need to pay attention to in order to really catch the gist because it's really not a big deal, but... R. Kelly and his defense team, they're really uh, grasping at straws. So R. Kelly's attorney, um, they hone in on text message exchanges where Rashana is sharing some pregnancy photos with the former lead prosecutor in this case. And essentially, Bon Jean, R. Kelly's attorney, is basically saying here um, is that she finds the exchanges between the two of them to be inappropriate or suspicious. Now, Bon Jean says... So you were on those types of terms with them that you sent them a photo of your bare belly? Rashana says, they had seen me in a pretty negative light. So I thought it was good to share something positive with them. Right? And so essentially what's going on here is she's trying to make it seem like there was some sort of romantic relationship or relationship based off of physical attraction here as to why they gravitated towards um, maybe wanting to represent or deal with her, right? And essentially what came out as I was reading the transcripts today is that she had some professional photos taken, which a lot of pregnant <laughs> a lot of really pregnant women do. And she shared those photos with the prosecutors. But here you have Bon Jean trying to somewhat insinuate or sexualize these images and saying that Rashonda had an inappropriate relationship with the former lead prosecutor here. Mind you, this is a former lead prosecutor. So it's not like the lead prosecutor is there to really defend themselves, but we'll see. We're going to get into what the prosecution actually has to say in response to what Bone Jean was trying to pull with this situation. So let me see what's going on with my co-host. Make sure, listen, if you haven't already hit thumbs up, please don't make me pull this bus over, kick you off, and we had to fight. Baltimore, stand up. If you're here in Baltimore, put your 410, put your 443, put your 202 in the chat, drop some pancakes, okay? We're going to go right... Um, into a commercial really quick and then we're going to get back with the redirect examination from the prosecution jumping right back into talking to and following up on some of these crummy bummy scummy points that our kelly's attorney was trying to make here okay hit thumbs up drop pancakes we'll be right back so let's see if you really bout about it if you've been serious about what you've been saying about wanting to support more black owned businesses here's your chance i found a spot for us to grab our hats hoodies, affordable electronics, phone accessories, and gadgets from. It's over on edwardso.com. That's E-D-W-E-R-S-O-W.com. Grab something for your hubby, your wife. Hey, I ain't encouraging that side chick behavior, but it's just in time for the holidays. So head on over there and grab your AirPod cases, hoodies, and affordable electronics. That's edwardso.com. E-D-W-E-R-S-O-W.com. And I'll see you over there. It's time to face it, boo. Your product needs more exposure. If you want to see your ad here on my channel, be sure to shoot an email over to yt.theplainestjane at gmail.com and let's chat. But if you're new in my neighborhood here on YouTube, hey, 
I'm the plainest Jane and I provide coverage and commentary on trending stories, viral events, and black culture. I definitely, definitely appreciate you stopping through and hitting that subscribe button if you'd like more of my particular brand of syrup. All right, and we are back. I wish I had time to read the chat, but I don't want to slow down the replay process for the people coming back to watch. Okay, and my co-host acting like he want to do escape. Okay, I had to make sure he was all good. He he was me yowed up in this month. But, okay, yes, Leo, we was just okay. Okay, okay, we can hear you. Oh. Okay. That's it. All right. Can we continue, please? Can you get down, buddy? Can you get down, please? Buddy, can you get down? Don't make me get nasty in front of these people. Leo, get down. Get down. Okay, well then get on top of the chair. Something. Move! You're going to make me throw them bold. <laughs> Bye. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. I don't got time. Cat got me out here about to throw some bowls. Bye. Bye. <laughs> He didn't already had three. We got another video to go. No, let's continue though. Thank you for hitting thumbs up. Okay, somebody said cats are something else. Cats are definitely something else. I was watching something on Netflix the other day, and it said the difference between cats and dogs is dogs think the humans, the owners, are gods. Like they think you're gods. Like they just cats, they think they're the gods, and you're supposed to serve them. No, no, no. <laughs> but it's true though. It's true. <laughs> nonetheless let's get into some redirect examination okay some redirect examination we still got the girl from the heart of the trial right the girl from the tape the tape that was at the heart of the 2002 indictment the 2008 trial right she's still on the stand she's been cross-examined twice now we're getting into some redirect examination from the prosecution, from the side of the government. Okay. Tina Turner kept her name. But she, and look, I'm not, I'm not trying to compare burdens. I'm not trying to. However, it's a difference between keeping the name of somebody that abused you physically and somebody that literally is a predator and has to join the sex offender. You know what I mean? And I don't want to say, you know what I mean? Because if, if if I had been born around the time Michael Jackson was born and we had a divorce, you better believe I, I, I would, you best believe I would have kept his last name unless he was a pedophile, right? Feds investigated him for 10 years. I don't know. But I'm just saying, it's a, you know what I mean? Depending on how big the name is, like I, I totally get some woman feeling like I'm not letting go of this, but. We're talking about somebody like we have no vi we have accusations of 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 Michael Jackson, right? Not to get too far off track. We got accusations. Do we got tapes, or do we got people who really took his weird personality because Michael was gypped out of a childhood, and they took that and decided to create a rumor that had a snowball effect? But the feds literally investigated Michael Jackson for ten years and found nothing. They found nothing. Whereas though R. Kelly done filmed himself for almost 30 years doing this and there's no denying it. I dare I say the grievances and the, 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 the tribulations between an Ike Turner and an R. Kelly are different. I'm sorry. It's, it's difficult for you to get on the level of a pedophile when somebody who literally goes out of their way to abuse children and to steal their innocence. And I'm not trying to trivialize physical abuse because I've been there. I am saying that they different though. They different. 
They different. <laughs> they different. Okay? I just, I, it's, it's a lot of different sins out here. And it's, it's difficult to get on the level of a pedophile unless you're a fucking pedophile. And I don't really... Yeah, let's continue. Redirect examination. Rashawn Lanfair is still on the stand. This is immediately after R. Kelly's attorney decides to cross-examine her, right? The first thing that they do in this redirect examination is they clarify that there was no inappropriate relationship with the former lead prosecutor. Remember, we had R. Kelly's attorney saying, oh, you had a relationship where you were so comfortable that you wanted to share your bare belly with the former lead prosecutor for the government. What the prosecution does is they go in and they confirm that the majority of the text messages between the former lead prosecutor and Rashana were about scheduling matters. It wasn't about them being infatuated it, it, it wasn't a sexual thing. It wasn't them liking her naked body. It was about scheduling matters, right? Next, prosecutors address Rashawn and line the prosecutors back in the, you know, the 2002, 2008 uh, debacle, right? Remember, she stated that she was ashamed and she was trying to protect him, which is why she didn't tell the truth. That's what she said in her testimony. The prosecution makes it a point to get the point across that, they reiterate that she was a teenager, right? Why she lied back in 2002 slash 2008. They said she's a teenager and she was 15 to 16 years old when Robert was specifically instructing her to keep everything that they were doing a secret. Okay, right. And Tina Turner and Andrea Kelly, baby, two totally different levels. She can reinvent herself tomorrow and be something different. Tina, Andrea Kelly is nowhere near what Tina Turner was. Okay, is, is, is. Now the prosecution asks Rashonda where she was staying during R. Kelly's 2008 trial, to which she answered she was staying in hotels because she wasn't supposed to be seen with R. Kelly during the trial. Now, before she leaves the stand, she confirms that she had multiple sexual encounters with R. Kelly when she was 14. 15 and 16 again a sexual encounter aka a sexual act is not the same as losing your virginity okay so now we get into a small a sliver of cross examination just a sliver of cross examination on behalf of defendant mcdavid Okay. McDavid's attorney, because again, you got R. Kelly, he's on trial, and then you've got Milton Brown on trial, and then you've got Darrell McDavid on trial. So when we get McDavid's attorney up here, essentially, honestly, I'm reading through and I'm like, they honestly say nothing substantial. Okay. Let me put this on the screen. Go ahead and read this. All right, take a sip of my sparkling water. These are questions between McDavid's attorney and Sparkle's niece, Rashonda Lanfair, okay? He really doesn't say anything <clears throat> substantial outside of reiterating the fact that R. Kelly encouraged Rashonda to lie to everyone. And that Robert went through great lengths in order to keep his secret safe from the world. They're really reiterating how Rashonda would not, wouldn't have had a clue as to what R. Kelly and McDavid were discussing when she wasn't around. And they're essentially insinuating that McDavid was completely out of the loop and didn't know all of R. Kelly's dirty and illegal secrets. Now, when we come over to McDavid's attorney and what McDavid's attorney is saying, again, I said they, they really didn't say a whole bunch of anything and they literally took less than I'm going to say 15. It might have even been less than 10 minutes. They really weren't up there for long. Okay. McDavid's attorney says, 
when you run around, you don't know what Robert told McDavid, do you? She didn't understand the question. So she said, you said when I was around or when I wasn't around. They say when you were not. She says, no, I don't know what Robert told Darrell McDavid when I wasn't around. McDavid's attorney says, okay, but you do know. Okay, but what you do know and what you describe today is Robert was involved in an effort to lie about or deny this to the world, right? And she says, yes. So you can see what they're putting down. You don't know what they discussed when you weren't around, right? Right. And Robert was trying to deny this to the whole world, right? And say you waiting that, look, my client is part of the whole world. Or Kelly's trying to lie about these relationships that he's having with these minors, her included. What makes you think that my client isn't part of the whole world that Robert is trying to lie to? Okay. So that's it. Right. Again, they didn't say a, a whole bunch that was substantial, but I felt like, OK, let me take a screenshot from the transcripts and show you all a little bit of what was and just give you a small synopsis. OK, so now the girl from the tape, a.k.a. Rashawna Lanfair, she leaves the stand. Now, as the courtroom prepares to go to lunch, the prosecution is aware of the fact that when they return, They'll be playing the illicit videos of R. Kelly having sex with an underage Rashonda. And as the judge, right, they're asking the judge if they would be able to clear the courtroom so that only the jurors would be present. Now, the judge rejects this and the judges went over this the judge went over this in the beginning of the proceeding this morning. But I guess the prosecution felt like they were going to try to like tick away at it. Um, but the judge is not changing his mind. The judge rejects this and states that there will be screens put up to block everyone but the jury from seeing the videos. And the screen will also block the media from seeing the jury's reaction to said videos. But as stated earlier, audio will be allowed. So the judge even said, well, where's the press supposed to go if we release the entire courtroom they're entitled to cover it and honestly there really would be no other place for the press to go because there are already overflow rooms the overflow rooms for the media are already full so you've got some media sitting in the courtroom with no electronic device literally just a pen and pad taking as many notes by hand as they can and then you've got the media who are in the overflow rooms who do have access to their devices who can type up and do what they want to do so if they were to dismiss the courtroom to play the child corn, where would the rest of the media go, right? And it's, it's supposed to be a fair trial or they're supposed to allow the, the press, press do have rights, right? So when I tell you that they had curtains up, here's a sketch. Again, you do know that there is no, um, there's no electronics, there's no flash photography, none of that stuff is available for and in, in the courtroom, okay? So when I say that they had these things up, here's the, the courtroom sketch. The courtroom sketch, you can see they had these really big dividers that they put up so that you couldn't see what was being played, but the jury in the courtroom uh, I'm sorry, but the media in the courtroom could see. So, the you know, the, the, this is it, it's different, right? It's it's different than they did it in New York for sure, but they still got the audio, right? To the fact that they couldn't even see the reaction of the jury. Um, I think that it would have helped the media if they were able to at least see the reaction of the jury, surprised, disgusted, disgruntled faces. Nonetheless, I think the audio was enough to really convey what was going on, okay? So they break for lunch, they come back, and now the government is getting into their sixth witness, okay? Let's continue. Let us continue. And we should be... We should be close to done, but we do have another video after this. Hey, thanks for letting me keep you connected and in the know with what's happening in the black world. Don't forget to smash on that like button for support and for more black news. 
So they break for lunch. They come back. The government is into the sixth witness, which is an HSI special agent. Here's what an HSI special agent is. I'm going to continue getting into these notes. Check it out, though. It's, it's a little cut, dry, and simple, especially because I highlighted what needed to be high, high lit for y'all. Okay? Not high lit. Highlighted. <laughs> okay, so HSI special agent Melissa Stifferman gets to the stand, and they're talking about the three sex videos obtained as a part of the investigation. The jury is about to watch three different child corn clips or exhibits. Video one is the original scene at the center of R. Kelly's 2008 child corn trial in Cook County. Videos two and three are other scenes that also allegedly include R. Kelly and Rashana engaging in intimate illegal acts. Okay. Again, the courtroom did have large fabric dividers to cover up the screens and the jury's reaction. Okay. Woo child, we getting closer to the description of this stuff, which I hate. I hate. I hate. Let me give you a just just a trigger warning coming up, right? I know I, I give y'all a trigger warning at the beginning of Arlie's R. Kelly videos, but this one right here, um, I had to get up and walk to the bathroom and take some steps before I continue getting my notes together here, okay? Like, dead ass. The description of these tapes. So, initially, as the media is sitting in the, in the, the overflow room, again, the, the judge made it very clear at the beginning of this proceeding today, like this morning, Friday, that audio was going to be allowed Video is not going to be allowed. The prosecutor still ended up asking to take the audio away. The audio was taken away probably for the first, I would say, couple minutes. Then the audio became available to the journalists, and we still got enough to discuss. To, to It was gut-wrenching, okay? Here we go. Trigger warning, trigger warning, trigger warning. So you can hear... Um, R. Kelly is telling a 14-year-old Rashana to get on her knees. To which she complied and said, Daddy, do you still love me? And mind you, this is the video where he's urinating on her. So he says, get on your knees. She complied and said, daddy, do you still love me? He replies back and says, of course I do. Mind you, they'd already taken still shots from this tape and asked Rashana earlier to confirm if it was her in this tape. So she's already authenticated and confirmed that it is her in this tape that they're watching, right? Rashana is also her referring to her 14-year-old genitalia repeatedly with a very high-pitched, young-sounding voice. When they say she's referring to her 14-year-old genitalia repeatedly, you know, what she's saying is she's talking about her 14-year-old P-U-S-S-Y and her 14-year-old A-S-S-S hole. Right. I just I just can't even say it. I just I, I just I got to spell it because I just can't. So she's heard repeatedly referring to her. How old she is in her privates. She's repeatedly referring to her 14 year old private parts several times, but also R. Kelly has heard numerous times in this video referring to her 14 year old. P-U-S-S-Y and A-A-S-S. Hold. Prosecutors identify the man on the tape as R. Kelly as he's heard giving Rashana another round of sexually explicit instructions. A series of several different sexually explicit instructions outside of just get on your knees. He's also heard 
after telling her to do sexual things, he's heard saying, I said, don't move. To which Rashana responds, I'm sorry. So, we need to go to the bush. It was gone. Let me just go in the bush and weep. Let me just go in the bush and weep. I just have to go in the bush and weep. Really. I, I don't understand. I swear to God, I don't understand. Someone says, I'm in Chicago. It's sad the tape was shown all over the city and barbershop schools everywhere. It's sad. Yeah, it is sad. So R. Kelly's attorney says, um, R. Kelly's attorney says to the HSI special agent who's up on the stand at this time, R. Kelly's attorney ends up saying, and this is, this is where the prosecution, the government dropped the ball. R. Kelly's attorney says, how many tapes do you have in your possession that are associated with this case? Silence ensues. R. Kelly's attorney says, can you answer? The HSI agent says, I'm sorry, I was waiting for the objection. The judge says, if there's no objection, I'm not going to rule. For those of you all who get court lingo, you get it. But the witness on the stand for the government, for the prosecution, was asked the question that they were clearly prepped for by the government slash prosecution. And they were preparing for an objection because obviously doing prep, they were told, if you're asked this question, we're going to object. So don't even try and rush and answer it because we're going to object. However, the government slash prosecution never objected. And the witness on the stand ended up saying, I'm sorry, I'm waiting for the objection. Government never says anything. And the judge says, if there's no objection, then I'm not going to rule because there is nothing to rule on if there's no objection. <sighs> prosecution dropped the ball. Uh, prosecution dropped the ball. Okay. So we get into the next government's witness okay where are we at with this how much okay 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 we get into the next government witness right which was customs border uh patrol agent jonathan sishi now he's telling the jury about who traveled with Rashana and her parents, Sparkle's niece and her parents, to Mexico slash the Bahamas in 2002 when the sex tape first went public. Now, the prosecution says that R. Kelly sent Melton, Milton June Brown to keep tabs on Rashana and her family. And according to flight records shown to the jury, because, yeah, they pulled flight records because they're not playing these kind of games. According to flight records shown to the jury, Brown indeed returned to the United States from the Bahamas on February 21st, 2002. But the defense also points out that Brown traveled to and from the Bahamas five other times as well. Okay. So, look. Here's what I noticed. Here's what I noticed. And I, and, and I do have to say this, right? Because this is wrapping up day five and we're literally about to go into day six. What I noticed is this, and I'm very appalled at what happened today in day six. I'm very disappointed. I need more lie. We're going to get into that in a second. What I noticed is so that R. Kelly's defense so far has not directly contested that it's him on the video clips okay they're only saying that the authenticity of said tapes or footage could not be verified and that robert was previously acquitted for conduct related to the footages 
nor has R. Kelly's defense given jurors an alternative version of Rashana, a.k.a. Sparkle's niece, a.k.a. the girl from the tapes. The defense has, hasn't given jurors an alternate version of Sparkle's niece's narrative of the events related to the videos. And instead, the defense lawyers are seeking to sow doubt by telling the jury that Rashana denied it was her on the clips for more than two decades. So look, in my humble opinion, I truly feel like R. Kelly's gonna lose this thing. I do. And I'm not trying to be I'm 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 honestly being realistic, right? Like I wouldn't say anything that I felt like I'm about to sit here and eat crow about. And if I eat crow, I eat crow. If R. Kelly gets off, he gets off. Good for him. But it doesn't look like he's gonna get off because they're not even willing to say they're not even trying to go with any of the old tactics they went with back in the day in 2002 slash 2008. Back in the day, it was oh, it's not him, it's his brother. You see that mole on his back, that mole not consistent, it's not him. They're not refuting any of that. The only defense that R. Kelly's attorney is given right now is well, why'd you stay with him later on when you were an adult? He clearly wasn't that bad because. You lived with him for a decade afterwards, right? You accepted money. He took care of your parents and so forth. They're not denying that it was him in the tape at all. I mean, the fact that there are 676 of y'all here with me right now, stop playing. Hit that thumbs up button. Shout out to y'all. Hey, thanks for letting me keep you connected and in the know with what's happening in the black world. Don't forget to smash on that like button for support and for more black news. I just want to know if y'all look, we, we getting ready to get on a whole nother bus. We are, we, 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 we getting ready to get on a whole nother bus and get into tomorrow. Um, and get into tomorrow and get into day six, which is Monday. And I just really want to know if y'all are ready. Are y'all ready for this trip? Do you have your passports and do you have your shots? <laughs> do you have your passports? Do you have your shots? Let's get it. <laughs> you know we're going to have to crack a laugh. This is some serious, this is some disgusting stuff we got to talk about. But you know we're going to get a laugh or two in here, right? You had to know that, right? I got it. The P-Hive really think that our... Matter of fact, let me drop the link because I said I said I would. If the P-Hive want to call in, they can call in. The P-Hive really think this man innocent and he made music trying to recruit call in. Please don't call in unless you support R. Kelly. Those are the only calls I'm interested in, okay? Nobody might not call in. We'll try next time. We'll see, but do you got your passports and do you got your shots? Do you have your passport? Did you get your shots? Girl, would, would you, you like, like to come back with Rob to America? America. Do you have your passport? Did you get your shots? Girl, would you like to come back with Rob to America? America, America, America. Do you have your passport? Did you get your shots? Who will come back with Rob to America? America. <laughs> what grown little boy said they said he need his damn shots i know that's right he do need his shots lord knows because he do got that herpes and that that doctor show did um Here's what we're getting into when we get into this next video. And like I said, it's going to take you directly from this one to the next one. We're getting into about, what, five different court exhibits directly from the courtroom. We're getting into the the, the fumbulation. That was, that, that was a fumble on, on the side of the defense. And it really made me sad that Rashonda... And her mom's testimony don't match. Like Rashana's mom's testimony is conflicting with her daughter's. And I'm like frustrated taking these notes because I just, 
I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Um, I also can't believe that R. Kelly's fans like to, you know, to take up for a man who literally even makes music about the things that he does. I mean, make it make it make sense. Make it make sense. It makes no sense. Right, Leo? Right? That's what I'm saying. Exactly. Let's go ahead and get into the next video. Of course, of course ain't nobody calling in. See, because when I'm about it, about it, and I'm ready, ain't nobody calling in. But that's cool. Look, we're going to get ready to go straight into the next video. The next video is starting in literally less than five minutes. Get over there. Go ahead and keep an eye on your screen. Okay, it might even prompt you to click the link that's pinned to the top of the description box. It's literally going to dump you off into the chat box of the next live. And I cannot wait to see you all there. But look, if you one of them P-Hive members where you just didn't get to call in in time, you'll get an opportunity to call in at the end of the next show as well. So look, y'all, be sure to tag me in your favorite trending topics on Instagram and on Twitter. Let me know what you think about day five on Friday of R. Kelly's trial in Chicago, which way you think it's going to go, which way does it land for you? Thank you for watching. Thank you for checking the community tab. If you haven't already, don't forget to do something to decompress today. And let me know your thoughts on everything that we discussed today. Don't forget to keep it sticky and real. Make sure you subscribe and thumbs up or down. Either way, I appreciate it. But make sure you think critically and independently, regardless of what you hear from me or anybody else. Hit that notification bell. If you haven't already, drop some pancakes down below in the chat. Y'all say beautiful, black, and blessed, and I'm going to catch y'all in three minutes on the next bus talking about Monday, day six, right here on your girl, the Plain Exchange channel. But that's it. If you want to catch more of my commentary on black culture or vital and trending information, be sure to subscribe by hitting that little circle in the middle of the screen, or I'll catch you in one of these rectangles to the right in another video. I'll see you there.